front of the pit and the rider is getting ready to get on. Let's see if some interesting information comes from the configuration chosen for the next lap. Happy New Year, hello and welcome to the first episode of Bike Channel Kenya in 2020. New Year means new things and kicking it off is this new segment which we will call Workshop and Maintenance where we will discuss how different parts of a motorbike work and how to maintain them. To kick us off in this segment is how an engine works in the simplest way we can and why we have the different types of engines we have, their advantages and their disadvantages. So how does an engine work? A piston goes down the cylinder and as it does so, it, it creates a vacuum. And now that it has created a vacuum, it sucks in air and fuel mixture. And as the piston moves back up, it compresses the air and fuel mixture. And when it reaches the top, a spark is produced, which ignites, making the air and fuel mixture burst. And due to the pressure created, it sends down the piston and through what is known as a cone rod, which is the thing which is attached to the piston, the energy is transferred to the crankshaft, which in turn transfers it to the gearbox, which then transfers the energy to the front sprocket, then to the chain, then to the rear sprocket, and then finally to the rear wheel, making the bike start moving. Now, this is a very simplified version of how the engine works, as it can get really technical very quickly. Now, let's get to the different engine types. Let's start with the simplest form, which is a single cylinder. These are known for their simple design, making them the choice for any small and cheap bike out there. They are known for their simplicity in design and manufacturing cost, very cheap. They are also known for low-end torque. However, that also means there is usually nothing at the top. The only problem with this type is the vibration. And woe unto you if you happen to ride a Chinese bike with this engine. Just the other day, I was riding on. And I swear I'm not making this up. Vibrations were so much that the side mirrors just shattered and broke into pieces within a kilometer of one another. The sound they make isn't also very charming. Now let's jump to the twins. And in this case I mean the inline twins. And as their name suggests, they are twin cylinders in a line. These aren't much different from the single cylinders in that they are simple in design, cheap to produce, however they still have a lot of vibrations. The sound is better than their single cylinder counterparts. They are used by both small CC bikes and big ones like the African Twin. Coming to the triples now. These are known for their unique sound they make, especially when coupled to a quick shifter. Vibrations here almost disappear. They make good low and mid talk, and especially the MT09, making it a really monster. Maintenance here changes because now you have three plugs to change, and obviously three cylinders consume more fuel. The drawback is that because it has good mid range, the top end has very low power and are known to deliver their power very rolly, especially for the MT09. Now that they are three cylinders, they become difficult to design and produce. So you won't see them in small, cheap CC bikes. Now let's come to the inline fours, which the Japanese have sworn to till death do them apart. For starters, it has four cylinders, so when two are going up, two are going down, meaning vibration are taken care of. They rev to very high revolutions per minute, and that's where they produce most of their power, meaning they literally have nothing in the low and mid-range revolutions per minute. And this is especially true for the 600ccs. I once jumped from a ZX14 onto a CBR600 and I literally thought there was something wrong with it, but after a few kilometers my brain recalibrated. As you get to the 1000ccs, the low and mid-range improve, especially so for Suzuki's from the mid-2000s. However, the most power will still be made at the top end. Now that we have four cylinders, the maintenance will be higher, as now you have four plugs to change, more fuel to buy, and so on. They make a lot of power, especially for a 1000cc engine, with bikes like the new 2020 Honda CBR 1000 producing 210 horsepower, which is insane. The sound they make is now synonymous with superbikes. Mm -hmm. 
and in 2009 Yamaha added a cross plane crankshaft to the inline 4 in the now famous Big Bang model making it more smoother and has a unique sound. Now to the less common inline 6 which Honda did in the CBX 1050 back in the late 70s. Not a commercial success but I have a feeling Honda are just trying to show everyone who is boss. These engines are known for their smoothness as the engine is 100% balanced and for their sound which sounds like Formula 1 cars from back in the day. The only manufacturer making them now is BMW and the K16 is known for its torque, smoothness and sound. <laughs> Now let's get to the V's and as the name suggests, instead of being in line, the cylinders oppose each other in a V-shaped pattern. Let's begin with the V-twin, which is famously known for its use in the early Davidson bikes and, and adventure bikes like the KTMs. The engine is known for its low end torque and is more smoother than let's say a parallel twin. They are expensive to manufacture due to two sets of cylinder heads, camshafts and so on. They are more compact, however, than inline engines and the sound they make is widely known thanks to the straight pipes that come as standard on alleys. <music> to the V4s then, which I must admit is my personal favorite engine type. For starters, they make so much power across the rev range that they will catch you off guard the first time you jump aboard one. They are more narrow than inline fours, and because the intakes are at the center of the V shape, they make them even more compact than inline fours. One drawback is working on this can be quite a pain. One thing, however, which makes them very favorable, especially for MotoGP teams, is the power delivery, which is so good that I might to get a cross plane crankshaft so that it could get the benefits of a V4 while still using the inline four. And when it comes to the sound, is there any other engine type which sounds better? Now let's come to the flat engine, also known as the boxer, because the pistons are opposed to each other at 180 degrees and when in action, they look like a boxer in a ring throwing punches. Let's start with the flat twin, which was BMW's main diet until recently when they got into inline fours, twins and uh, even a single. The engine is known for its width and outward appearance. The flat twins are very smooth and they have torque almost everywhere. The engine location makes the center of gravity very low, meaning a big BMW bike will surprise you when, when you get to a corner and flick it in. It will be so responsive that you will begin to wonder how a sub 250kg bike can corner so well. Another thing is the sound they make, very throaty and quite addictive I must admit. Due to their complicated design, you will most probably ever see them on iron BMW models. They are also very easy to work on because the whole thing is outside anyways. And now to the flat 4s and 6s. The flat 4 was used on the early models of Honda Goldwing which now uses a flat 6. And like the inline 6, the engine is silky smooth and produces plenty of torque everywhere on the rev range. They are very complex by nature, so you'll only see them on the, on the gold winds alone. The sound they produce is very unique in motorcycling world and very Porsche-like, since Porsche also uses the flat six on most of their models. The center of gravity is very low with this, also making the handling of the gold wing a little bit easier for such a big bike. <laughs> And now for our last engine type, which is a two-stroke. As the name suggests, it makes power in every two strokes it makes, compared to a four-stroke engine, which makes power once in every four strokes. So for starters, you will identify one by the way the exhaust pipe looks. It has a bulge, and that is known as the expansion chamber. Another way to identify one is, because the fuel is mixed with oil to lubricate the engine due to its design, that oil is usually burnt, making the exhaust color grayish. 
And finally, if you want to double check whether it is a two stroke, the sound the engine makes, a high pitched, almost irritating noise which will make your neighbors curse every time you pass by. And now, for what makes a two stroke a two stroke is the power delivery. You either don't have it or you have all of it. In the bottom end, there is usually no power. And as the revs get higher, you get to a point where you go from nothing to everything all at once in a range of like 500 revolutions per minute. And my friend, when the power kicks in, you better hope the road is straight. In fact, if you haven't tried a two-stroke bike, what are you waiting for? The downside with this engine is you have to mix oil every time you fill it up. The other downside is you'll be changing pistons like there's no tomorrow on these engines, especially so if your bike is a respec one. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let us know in the comment section below which is your favorite engine configuration and which engine types make the best sound. If it's your first time here, subscribe to the channel and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. See you in the next one.